<laughs> Big <laughs> news. You know, it, and with the whole Keenan Allen thing, um, I was driving back from Vegas, you know, yep. just chatting with the wife, having my thing, doing my thing. Next thing I know, I get a thousand texts and I'm like, I said something to my wife. I was like, hey, something big just happened. And big it was like out. everybody knew at that point, like, got to text James because he's one of the biggest Chargers fans, obviously. And, and it's one of the big wild. Keenan Allen fans, too, right? So, yeah, and Keenan Allen fans, even on top of that. And, whew, guys, wild. <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I, I fully expected that that was a joke uh, when yeah. I saw it originally. And I was like, oh, there's no way that's true. And I was like, no, 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 no. And then I kept seeing a pop on other, everybody else's. Uh, you know, it's guys, it is what it is, folks. So a lot to discuss. Obviously, uh, Joe Ortiz is cooking still. He's cooking. Yeah. Um, look, we're going to talk a lot about that. I want your thoughts. Throw it out there. And, um, you know, there's some interesting comments we had on a couple posts I did this morning that I want to talk about. I want to highlight. And guys, I love your posts. We read all your posts. I don't know if you guys know that. We read every yeah. single one of your posts. So lots to discuss, guys. Let's get into it. Let's go. Let's go. I'm Dale Henley. You watching the Boat Bros Podcast. Let's, Let's do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but what can we say? What a kick in the pills this has been so far, right? <laughs> right in the yeah, uh, right in the mommy and daddy button for everybody here. I mean, uh, oh boy, oh boy, I didn't think this would happen. Didn't think you know. Happen. And and the thing is, though, I mean, thank you, Keenan Allen, for being you know a Charger for such a long period of time. A guy that basically has fought through injury situations, came back, is absolutely a stud for us as a. Yep. Uh, a teammate as a player as a professional i mean the guy was an absolute stud regardless and it, it hurts to be able to say yeah, number 13 right. will not be on field anymore with us yep he'll be a bear like he was going to be one of those guys that you kind of look at and say he's going to retire as a charger um but one thing i said when tom telesco got the boot from the chargers i said no players protected at this point and Tom Telesco had Keenan Allen as his baby. He was a part of his first draft. Yep. And it was a late round, I think third round pick out of Cal. And it was a guy that just became the quintessential number one guy for the Chargers. The guy, the man, the leader. And, uh, yep. you know, thank you, Keenan Allen, for being who you are. But uh, just like what you put here on the uh, – Screen, it's a, it's money, a dollar money, issue. And Telesco overpaid issue. these guys, guys. Let's yep. let, let's be very clear about something. It, it, it's not necessarily, it's not a problem with the regime we have currently. Okay, they came into a crap situation where they were over the cap. They had to figure it out. And guys, unfortunately, business decisions have to be made, and that's the truth. Uh, James, you and I are both in sales. We understand the business discussion of conversations, right? And they had to make a change, right? It's kind of shocking. We clipped Khalil Mack and Joy Bosa, and they were willing to take a restructure, but Allen would not. And I knew we would lose Williams, most likely. Um, and he did. He overpaid his boys. It is what it is, guys. And again, that is not a Harbaugh or an Ortiz problem. But no. we, we're going to talk more about a lot of that, too. So again, let's just, let's just talk more about Keenan Allen. And again, Keenan Allen's the man, dude. And again, I, but I think now it frees up some space. Now, again... In the chat, and James, do we know? I, I I've been trying to find information on this. Did they take over his contract? How much are we paying? And we should probably look at the sport track a little more as well. Too, I haven't looked at it this morning. Yeah, um, yeah, I checked out over the cap this morning, and obviously Keenan Allen's salary is not on the books anymore. Yeah. Okay, um, but at the same side, what it basically looked like to me is yeah. that we're currently over about fifteen million dollars, or excuse me. We have $15 million uh, to spend at this time um, as a team. Now, the idea of what the Athletics said, which was an article written by uh, Daniel Popper and a few other 
individuals involved with the Bears organization and everything. The Chargers approached Allen about taking a pay cut on his $23.1 million combined base salary and roster bonus. Basically, it sounds to me like now the Bears are taking the trade will clear an additional $23.1 million in cap saves for the Chargers, according to over the cap. So I, it, it kind of doesn't really give you like a specific that, yes, that's official. We didn't do some sort of split or anything, but it sounds like the Bears are taking the $23.1 million salary. So yeah, so I'm seeing right now Sport Track says $36 million available now is what I'm seeing. Okay, excellent. And that's that's about right because when you start looking at like what's going on with the Bosa restructure and the Mac restructure, yeah. that's solid. Um, so, oh my God, look at the ads on this. This is really aggravating. I hate this site. <laughs> I mean, the ads on this thing are just aggravating. But it says thirty-six million, so we'll keep a track on. Uh, we'll keep an eye on that. Now, again, again, guys, Keenan Allen is a stud. You know that. I know that. The league knows that. But it breaks my heart. It's kind of like when Phil Rivers played what one season with with the Colts. Yep. And then, and then, or was it, it was just one season. And, you yep. know, and yes. And again, Nick, you're correct. We are not going to get a comp for Allen because we got a fourth round pick. And I want to tell you exactly about this trade further about these comp picks. Yes. So he was on a one year contract with us guys. Like yep. one year contract. One-year contract. He walks. I would assume at that point he will walk at that point. We probably yep. will not basically re sign him. He walks. He's probably not going to get top dollar in the market. He'll get a good size contract. He'll probably give us a fourth round pick next year. Now, why this move is genius is because we get a fourth round pick this year when we really need to fill a lot of gaps in this. Exactly. Team. Yep. It's moving ahead to be able to get further for the future, basically. It's kind of like and, kind of like going to college, guys. You go to college to plan for the future. And and look, think think of it this way. We don't have linebackers. You could get a very good linebacker in the fourth round. You could get a very good running back in the fourth round. But it sucks. Guys, it sucks. You know, I wanted to in, you know, you're exactly right. Carlos says this, I wanted to retire a charger. Me too. Um, it it's tough, dude. Um, it's gonna be tough. Um, but like you can't diminish what he's done, right? He he is he's been the face of the franchise for a long time now. I think I think it will say a little bit more too. Uh, we'll, we'll talk more about this as well too, and we'll talk more about where where I think this team is going to go uh, moving forward, uh, especially. Uh, go ahead, James. I was going to say one thing too. Maybe this move really happened, and the reason why he did not want to restructure because if you follow Keenan Allen or Mike Williams on Instagram, they're boys. They're yep. boys absolute boys and they're out like you know going to parties together they're traveling yeah. together yeah they're boys and probably what it was was hey when mike williams got let go keenan's probably like i'm gone guys i'm out yep. i'm ready to go what if something wild happens now where keenan allen goes to the bears mike williams signs with the bears like they would have three really 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 good wide receivers in, yep. in chicago and that's totally possible completely possible yeah, and um, yeah, Kyle. And so Andrew I don't sure. said that too. There you go. Yep, yep. Uh, th there's a lot to be said. You know, again, look. In the long run, that's what matters. And we're going to talk more about how this offense is going to change, guys. Yep. The other thing to remember too is when you're a run first offense, guess what? The wide receivers don't get the ball as much. And the reason why you want to do that is Herbert's not in harm's way. You, you give it to the big bruiser backs that are going to just demolish and play power football. Yep. Again, think of how, think of how the, think of how Michigan beat Ohio state and those other teams, they beat them into submission. So in the fourth quarter, they had more gas in the tank than they did. And I'll tell you right now, guys, just so you know, that's how the football is going to be. Again, we're going to talk about the tight ends as, as well here in a second. Two two tall ginger tight ends that are about two sixty. I mean the, the the ginger twin towers, bro. Like guys, they they are very good run blockers. Yeah. And so, guys, it is what it is, man. I mean, and 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 remember, you want to protect Justin Herbert. You can't. Keenan Allen, Mike Williams didn't protect Justin Herbert. If you don't have a good line, you're not going to protect him. Now, again, I'd be pretty ticked off if we went for Joe Alt or something like that in the first, you know, number five pick. Yeah. Personally, at this point, guess what? We're probably going to get a wide receiver. 
That's yep. we're going to stick and pick. And we're going to get a wide receiver or we trade back and get more picks. So I'm curious to see how that plays out too. What do you guys think? Do we trade back still or do we just get a wide receiver at five or do we go you know, tackle? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, and, and go back to your point about just how we're going to just play power based football. Um, I, yep. this is maybe an odd little comparison, but at the same side, I, I get that feeling when you've beaten so, your opponent down so bad that they're just completely Demo- demoralized yep. and, and they just, they can feel that. And I, I like, for instance, if I play pickleball and you're just, just dominating the person, you can sense from that other side that they're just kind of like, there's nothing I could do. Like I gave yeah. up. And yeah. I think that's really the idea here. We want to be able to beat people down, which Joe Ortiz and, and Jim Harbaugh has chatted about that. They want people to come into this stadium and say, oh my gosh, we got to play the Chargers. Yep. Like we got to be on our A game or we're just going to get demoralized, basically. And that's kind of what we're doing. Like once again, Keenan Allen is an absolute stud. Third down king. Guy is an absolute phenomenal wide receiver. But it is kind of one of those things now you're starting to say, hey, look, we're changing this regime. We're changing the idea, the identity of this team. What we had in the past was a guy that's been around for a while and a guy that has done phenomenal things for us, but we've never got to the Super Bowl with him. So it's really about buying into the system or you're out pretty much at this point. (laughs) Michael Bandy. Michael Bandy. Dude, we were all hyped on that guy. Now, here's the thing. If we really have that much money in cap space, we got a lot of work we could go do. We could go. And yeah. again, you know, Smizzle, hey, Michigan, what's up? You know, you probably are joining this channel because you're a big Jim Harbaugh fan. But again, give us your thoughts on this. I mean, look, bottom line, it's going to play, you know, um, yeah, I want us to win a ring in my lifetime. Please, yes, yes, yes. yes. Aaron Donald retired. Is that true? I, I Someone said that what? might be happening. I, I thought it said he restructured his contract. Yeah, I, I think you coming to the Chargers. Let's go. No. Yeah, Aaron, Aaron Donald. Um, so yeah, yeah. Let me know. Let me know if that's true, guys. Um, again, a lot yeah, of a lot three of cool hours ago, up. he just restructured. So yeah, I, th- I think it says restructured. Yeah. Ah, very cool, very cool. So again, I don't want to diminish anything from this gentleman right now. Wow, he retired. That's crazy. It wouldn't surprise me. I mean, you know, he probably knows. Hey. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Jim, it's awesome. So, okay. To me, I think we stick and pick at five. We get that wide receiver that's going to be that dude for Justin Herbert. And then you figure things out. Because again, centers, tackles, they're very good in the second and third rounds. And if we get a fourth round pick, which we got for Keenan Allen, that's probably better than what we get for a comp pick. He's 31, guys. Remember, he's 31 years old. So, uh, yeah. But again, I really do think that we're going to probably stick and pick at five, get Marvin Harrison if he's there, or neighbors. I mean, or maybe even Roma Dunze, but I think it would probably be neighbors in my opinion. But yeah, it, it, it at this point, you have to think, yeah, you got to go get an elite wide receiver at this point. Like you yep. have got to at this point. Like, yep. you know, there is that side that I kind of in my mind when the whole thing that Joe Ortiz came over, Jim Harbaugh being power based type football and everything, too, I kept thinking. Just maybe just the wide receiver is not going to be the biggest, biggest focus at all for this team. It's maybe yeah. it's going to be tight ends. Maybe it's just literally going to be a run game. Now that to saying that, I don't know, Gus Edwards is going to be our bell cow essentially at this point or Isaiah Spiller or whomever. Uh, we need to be able to find another guy to be able to be that bell cow or that one, two punch or even possibly three um, yeah. guys kind of go back to the Ladadian Tomlinson, Michael Turner and Darren Sproles era three really, really solid guys for us in different ways. And I expect us to be that way. I expect us definitely to draft a running back too, um, which probably be more available in the fifth or fourth, which we did get a fourth round pick guys from the bears like that. And it's an early pick in the fourth round. Yeah. So yeah, I think there's going to be a lot that we're going to get. Yeah. And Blake Corum could be that dude too. I mean, there's a lot of guys that could be really good fits for us. Yeah, and I and I think you're right. Neighbors is the way to go. Now, so I, I posted that this morning. You guys made some great comments. I'm just going to highlight your comments real quick um, off of this. So again, here's here's just our page. Um, so again, this is what I said. Uh, actually, let, let me let me blow this up a little bit so you guys can see it a little better. All right, can you guys see that a little better? There you go. A little, little, little better. Go. That looks good. Okay. 
We're doing it live. Okay, guys. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> so again, I, I do think we stick and pick. We go wide receiver. I, I think this. But this is a great comment. These two comments right here are fantastic. Um, I really think it's time for the for the change for the charge offense with the OG players from last season. Had no run game. Guys, we were 30th in Girl. the league. We were horrible at running the ball. Completely good change. Yeah. Two big tight ends. I'm pretty confident we've been – probably last in running for the last three seasons yes. like it, a very back end of the nfl like we have yep. to make a change yeah now now again it's not a problem with keenan but it was a problem with the offense in general you have to remember it's not a problem with keenan keenan was great nope. but but when you were going to run the ball and run two tight end sets most of the time which is what it looks like we're going to do uh it's going to happen right now sure. so let's just read the rest of this, this is a great comment uh, subpar passing game after Herbert was hurt. Now, again, Herbert was hurt because he had a crappy offensive line and he was taking a lot of punishment, folks. Yeah. Have to accept the change to the regime. I totally understand the regime forward, blah, blah, blah. 13, uh, will always be a charger. This is great. Now, as charger fans, we are mostly connected to these guys. We have to take um, the situation that it failed, right? Ultimately, everything failed. Yep. Uh, what we need is somebody to step up and identify and make changes necessary moving forward. It's a tough Band-Aid, but it needs to get ripped off. Exactly. So, guys, at the end of the day, it sucks. It, it yep. sucks. But you you have to understand. Look, we stick and pick at five. We get neighbors or even even Harrison. If, if maybe they pick neighbors over Harrison, which I don't see that happening. Dude, the Herbert has his guy then. Herbert has his guy. Exactly. And that's, that's kind of what we want to see. So, yeah, again, I mean. Keenan Allen was an inherited guy he could rely on, but you need a guy to grow further with Justin yes. Herbert and elevate Correct. him even further. Correct. Basically. Correct. So, and, 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 and that's the, that's the situation that I was thinking about a lot is that, okay, what's the point, right? Man, Aaron. Okay. So I guess Aaron Donald's is retiring. That is crazy guys. Cause funny. I was just seeing everywhere for it and nobody's, I'm not seeing where the people are seeing this at. So it's like, Literally everything I'm looking at right now, it's nobody's saying he's retired. It's more I restructured my contract, basically. So yep. I see, I see, I keep saying restructure too as well. Um again, Quinton Johnson will have a bounce back year. I think he will. I think I think he'll be fine. Now, oh yeah, per oh, it's per Adam Schefter. So Adam Schefter, I'll go that makes sense. take a look. Yeah, T. Higgins. Yeah, uh, wow. he did. I mean, or he's getting or he's I, I think there was another post recently in this free agency that was like a fake post, basically, and some of the bigger guys. <laughs> was the I was like, "Oh, that was that was, that was a, that was a <laughs> That's funny. That's funny. So I'm going to say one thing too, guys. Another thing that I'm going to say that Kyle and I talked about quite a bit last night. Um, this team is getting younger, right? We exactly. we had four guys at the top that were just extremely expensive, and we're going to get younger. Mm -hmm. um, well, and it's crazy because the chart that you showed was the top 12 salaries cap hits in the NFL. And we yeah. had four of those guys. Now, did I think Keenan Allen was a safe bet? How, how many of us basically said, yeah, he's a oh, safe bet? He's safe. I, I thought he was yeah. no problem. No I, remember what he said at the end of the season? Yeah. He he said, I don't, I, I'll don't. i probably retire if I get traded, you know? Yep. So clearly, <laughs> but, but but here's my point. I think they wanted to restructure him, and he said no. Yeah. And that's a frustrating situation, you know. And, but he also knows there's not many sands left in the hourglass, you know. Yep. Um, but yeah, we could probably go back and get Mike Williams now, just so you know. How how messed up would that be, guys? <laughs> how funny would that be? We open up some cap space. All right, Mike, you want to come back? Do yeah, yeah, you're, you're in, what right? a cool. straight up kick in the pills, and then we go out and get Malik Neighbors. Dude, Yo. think about that. Oh you know, my and, and, god. And the whole thing too, man, like, I, I don't know. It's I, I, the further I keep looking at this, the more, even back to the post that you showed, I mean, it's about ripping the bandaid right now um, yep. versus doing it later. Now, obviously when the Ladanian Tomlinson thing happened years ago, I remember his press conference after that. I mean, yep. to me, that, that was hard to watch. I mean, blaming Norv Turner on that and everything too. And, but you, there is a point with the guy's career that you're like, it's time to move on and you got to go. And, and, and it's, it hurts. It hurts for sure. But I'm excited about what's ahead of us more than anything. Yeah. I'm excited to be able to see a new regime where I'm excited to see a guy that could be that dude that elevates this team even further. Now, 
Keenan Allen did what he tried to do, and he he's an absolute dog. And if he does end up playing with the Bears and we get that fourth round pick, I mean, if for some weird reason, if he stays true to his word that he's going to end up retiring, um, you know, it is what it is. I mean, but at the same side, I think we just had to make this move. We had to make this choice. We have a lot of things that are moving ahead for this team that I'm really, really excited about. And, you know, maybe this is also a move to give Quentin Johnston a little bit more confidence too. like say, hey, look, you're the guy. You could be the guy or a very complimentary guy at this point. So I don't know. I And maybe even to say like, I don't know, I've thrown it out there before, guys, but there's a guy out there that was an ex-Raider that I I think is a very, very solid guy, great route runner all around that is a free agent wide receiver right now. If you look at Hunter Renfro, I mean, I guarantee people in the chat are going to say, Hunter sucks, Hunter sucks. Watch some of that dude's tape in his three-cut three, yeah. three cut route, dude. That yep. guy could – dude, that guy could cut like no other and be that guy that could get us those third downs when necessary. Be that reliable guy for us. I yeah. think he's – and he's burned the Chargers a few times in his career. And and, and he'll sell you a uh, cell phone afterwards because he'll take oh, yeah. a cell phone dealer, dude. Verizon. You got Verizon. You got, I you got, got, you. You got Verizon? Yeah, I'll, I'll – uh... I'll get that new. Give me that new pickle phone, dude. Let me get that new pickle phone. Um, yeah, Renfro is great, dude. You know, you know, like I, I really, truly look. If it's true that we have thirty-six million dollars left over, guys, we got money. In a very short period of time, we have enough money to go out and actually make things happen. And there's linebackers. Oh, wait. Oh, okay. I was just gonna say, <laughs> Carlos. That's. Cr- I was literally go. gonna say. There are oh, linebackers God. that are available right now. Let's, who, who did we sign? Uh, oh my God, this is crazy. If we if we sign somebody as we're live, oh, Troy Die, Troy one year deal. Was he from the... Troy Die? Yeah. Wow. All right, I'm, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do a post right now. Troy Die, that's amazing. Troy Die was from. Okay, so <laughs> we get out. <laughs> Dude, that is crazy. I was guys, literally, I was gonna say, oh yeah, there's linebackers out there. Oh my goodness. So that Troy is- Dye was a linebacker from the Vikings. So we get rid of one ex-Viking Charger Charger player to get another Vikings linebacker. Young guy. So you think 27 years old. University of Oregon guy. 6'3", 245. Um, a guy that, uh, you know, probably knows Justin Herbert and played with Justin Herbert. Okay, let me... Um, let me pull it up here um, as we're talking. Again, we're doing this on the fly. Um, yeah, that's crazy, man. I Wow, that's crazy, dude. Guys, Troy Dye. That, and again, I, I was just saying, like, you know this team. Here we go. You know this team wanted to make some decisions. Wow, that is so crazy. And he's cheap. I guarantee they got him cheap. Okay, let, 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 me, let, me, let me say one thing. I said this a few episodes ago when everyone was talking about the draft, the draft draft. I what did I what did I say, James? I said, you know what? Free agency is going to really affect the draft. Yeah. How exactly. much has free agency already affected the draft completely? The draft yep. is not even part of our thinking anymore, right? But now yeah. we we get this guy. Okay, we have a linebacker. We'll probably pick up a linebacker later on in the draft. I would assume. We need a center. We might even sign a center in free agency. I've I've been more hoping we go after a veteran center. So we'll probably do some more research on that and go from there. Um, but yeah, uh, this is awesome. You know, but this it, is but the point, guys. You don't need home runs. No, nope. you need you need triples. You need doubles. You need players that just create depth. That's all you need. And this team's never had that, guys. Yep. So, anyways. Yeah, and what what's interesting to me is that it almost seems exact. Well, obviously transactions are always going to happen in, in the NFL, but it seems like when you make one transaction, you make another transaction to add somebody for some reason. It's like we right. make a move to be able to free up some money to be able to make another move for somebody else. Now with Troy Die, like I mean, he's he is a four year player with Vikings. Not necessarily something that like he had a whole. It seems almost like he didn't have a whole heck of a lot of like play time on on field or anything like that but the the measurements are there um younger guy which is great you want to be able to build up that linebacking core maybe he's also a very good special teams guy too um he did actually have a uh, he was on injured reserve in 2020 uh two was activated later on but it seems like for the most part he didn't get a ton of playing time on the field but at the same side sometimes you find those gems that have been sitting on other people's 
teams that they just never decided to play. And they did have a lot of linebackers with the Vikings for a very long time in those positions. And he was maybe just buried in the chart. So, hey, well, I'm excited was, to see how it goes with him. I would also assume he's probably a pretty good special teams guy too, uh, is, is what I'm thinking. You got to remember, yep. we lost uh, uh, Amen Abigmia. Yep. Um, and uh, he was pretty good. Uh, so, oh, yeah, Puna Ford. We're going to talk about Puna Ford as well. I think he's going to be very good. But think about this, guys. Look, we got we got Mac Bosa, Williams, and or sorry, Mac Bosa and Thule, not Williams. Um, look, my my point is we got plenty of depth on the defensive side. Well, we're starting to get it now. A quarterback becomes very important, right? Because there's no quarterbacks out there. So I think, guys, we might even go for a quarterback for if if Tyrion Arnold's available around in the top ten, bro, we'll probably get him. That guy, that guy from Bama is incredible. Or the other guy yep. from Toledo. Uh, could be the, could be the guy as well too, but the first pick is going to be very interesting. I, I'm very curious about the first pick because we could go a lot of different ways. But again, this goes to show you this is how the free agency completely changes the draft projection because of you know these different pickups. Yep, absolutely, man. And and you know going back to the whole Keenan Allen thing, the Joey Bosa restructure, the Mac restructures, like I. I mean, if we keep all three of those guys and officially keep all three of those guys, because, I mean, still, I think there's a chance something could happen there with one of those guys. If somebody comes to him and says, hey, look, like, we tried to get a defensive end in uh, or a linebacker or whatnot in the draft. <laughs> what if they decide to trade off one of those guys? But I'm excited to be able to see what this defense could really do if all three of those guys could stay healthy. Because if you remember last year when Joey Bosa, Mac, and Thule were on the same line, the same time it they was were crazy awesome they were to watch crazy dude it was awesome to watch so yep i i think that's going to be really really fun and just in jesse minter's defense that's going to be an amazing thing to watch too so i'm excited about it guys i'm excited about where this is at i mean it it, it, it sucks when people leave and it sucks when that basically keenan allen's gone it sucks that mike williams is gone but hey trust the process guys trust the yep. process i i'm i how many times have we said in all of last season, I could say, when you look at the wide receivers or like when a guy has the ball running the ball or, you know, a wide receiver gets the ball, it just never seems like anybody else is trying to block somebody to help that guy with the ball. Yeah, And it just seems like people weren't as physical. Like Keenan Allen was a pretty good wide receiver in the sense, but I, w I feel like nobody was trying to go downfield to help this guy out to get a touchdown or whatnot. Yep. That's something I'm going to expect a lot with Jim Harbaugh. We're going to see guys that want to go downfield and block. Like, hey, what if we try to do a trade to get Brandon Ayuk from the Niners? Like, Brandon Ayuk comes from a very physical system, and that guy's a great wide receiver. Like, there's yep. ways to be able to kind of get this team into a different level in a different era where we're going into right now that I, I'm excited to be able to see where it goes. Uh, yes, Kevin, it would have to happen very soon. I, I highly doubt he'll get traded. Um, at this point, I think, I think he took a restart. He, he, he was originally supposed to get like 33 million right now. The, yeah. uh, sport track is saying 29. So he took a bit of a cut. Uh, now again, most of that's going to be a signing bonus, right? Yeah. I think some of it's incentive based too. There was, there was something else on there, like based on sacks and a few other things. Um, so there's a few things going on. Thank you. Thank you guys. And smash that like button guys. Uh, you know, if you can, um, and, and, and look guys, again, I've said this over and over again, you do not need to have star players. You need nope. depth. This team has never had depth. They've always had just, again, top four players on our team. Non quarterbacks were the highest paid players. And I'm, I'm sorry guys, like that, that doesn't work in the modern NFL. You need good players across the board. You don't need tens. You need like a bunch of sevens or a bunch of eights out of, yep. you know, and, and that's what you need. Right. So, um, you know, last night when I got home, uh, the wife put on Moneyball, and <laughs> you know, you think about how Moneyball was is idea. It's about stats. It's about kind of fits. It's about getting guys cheaper, the guys that fit into a system or a role. And if you go back to what Joe Ortiz and Jim Harbaugh talked about in the press conferences, it's about getting a guy that fits a role for your team. And if yep. you could just get a bunch of those guys that fill for certain needs, certain packages or whatnot, that's all you really need to have. You need to have a well-oiled machine and guys that could be plug and play players to be able to fit 
what you're trying to build up as a team. So, you know, once again, this is one of the guys here too. Like Hurst, he's a guy. Yep. Like he's a dog. He's a like he's a guy that's going to just get you. He's a good wide receiver or a tight end. He's a good pass catcher. He's a guy that's going to give you a lot of physicality. Will Disley, same thing. Like physical, physical, physical guys. What did we talk about earlier in this live? We want people to fear us, to play us. Like we don't want people to come in and say, hey, look, like my my example of playing on the pickleball, you know, court, when you know you're dominating a guy, you could feel that they're being dominated on the other side. They know they're just demoralized. Let's just demoralize teams from this point on. Let's make yep. teams fear to play us. Well, look, and, and think of it this way. Um, and again, I so let's talk about Hurst real quick. Just so you guys know, we got the two tower gingers, right? We got Disley and we got Hurst, dude. A couple of, couple of tall, nasty ginger tight ends, dude. And I'll tell you what, dude. Yeah, and by the way, Xavier Leggett, solid, man. I think that yep. guy could be very good in the third round. Yep. Who, who knows where he goes? I mean, I, apparently he was like, fast as all get out too so killer yeah yeah now again um you could get Ro roman wilson you could get all these guys i mean there's a lot guys a lot you want to build good depth on the team but you really have to do it in the draft you can't really do it in free agency because usually they're one or two year contracts or kind of band-aids but you want the depth so then you can start releasing people and get more comp picks back right so that's kind of the whole situation and and we way overpaid for these guys this guy right here, I think it was a first round pick, if I remember correctly. Yeah, I want to say he was. I mean, but, but I think, think about he him. was also with the Ravens, by the way, too. Yeah, he was. Yeah. So the one thing I will say also, too, guys, again, this is this is a perfect example of a great pickup, right? Gus Edwards is also a great pickup because he's not expensive, but he will get the job done, right? Yep. You know, ask yourself this question Do you want Saquon Barkley and pay him $10 million a year or whatever he's getting paid, or Gus Edwards? Who was we're gonna pay him three million dollars a year, and he's gonna probably get you know maybe three hundred yards less than maybe yeah. Saquon Barkley if if he stays healthy. And again, Gus Edwards could get healthy as well or unhealthy also as well too. But my point is, it doesn't really matter, right? Like think of the risk reward. It's it's like buying options in the stock market. Okay, I'm gonna I, I'm gonna bet it's gonna go up. You know, it, you're the risk reward needs to be there, right? And so this yep. guy's a very safe pick. He's gonna move bodies. And let's say we don't get a tackle in the draft. He will also help uh, Pipkins on that right yep. side. And Disley will help Pipkins on that right side. Yep. So, you know, Pipkins will look better. Yep. So, well, and, and Pipkins, Pip, Pipkins ain't easy. You know what I'm saying? Pipkins you know, ain't easy, <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and the big thing about it is, too, and just going – and I keep alluding and going back to basically what Jim Harbaugh and Joe Ortiz talked about. It's about getting depth between these positions, yes. too. Yep. We're getting similar guys that could actually be fillers. If one goes down, there's another guy that could do it again too, kind of thing. So it's really we're building just solid, solid depth all around. And how many times as Charger fans have we sat, sit there and say, man, we do not have a guy behind in the linebacker position or a guy that's a be behind Austin Eckler or a guy that's behind so on so on and so forth. We don't we don't generally have that, but I think very, very much feel like what's going on with the Ravens side of things. Their run game works almost all the time. They always have a good, solid run game they could always rely on. They always have very good defenses to rely on with depth behind positions. That's what they're doing right now. It, it sucks to see some people go, but at the same side, this is just awesome to be able to watch what we're seeing as a whole new era of Chargers versus like Brandon Staley talking about a whole new era of Chargers that basically ended up becoming a, a boys club basically with a few players. Yeah, it was. Yeah. Remember when they, when he didn't even remember it was Deion Henley's birthday. Didn't even, it was like, Oh yeah. yeah. Deion. You know, yeah. it's like, bro, like, like pay Terrible. attention to the rest of the people on the team, Terrible. not just a few people that yep. you care about, you know, and that's horrible leadership. And, and Disley, make no mistake about it. He can catch the ball. Hurst can catch the ball. Right. Uh, so, so my point is, um, you know, I think I think you're going to see power football, guys. These guys yep. are – so everyone keeps saying fullback, fullback, fullback. Now, the fullback is a tight end now. So what they're yep. doing is they're, they're they're moving the tight end back. He'll he'll be the lead blocker. Um, again, we're running power football, guys. It's going to be power. It is going to be – you're going to smash the ball down your throat and uh, stop us, you know. Um, yep. 
uh, you know, it's not going to be the exact same thing too, but, but I, I think there's a lot to be said about, the, uh, but the two tower gingers, I think is a really cool conversation, <laughs> you know, and what did I say when you talked that brought up about the two tower gingers and I was like, well, we also have a third ginger on the team who is uh, Scott Matlock. Scott, yeah, that's, right, like, that's right. That's right. I was like, take it a step further. We don't have a backup quarterback, right? Well, <laughs> we could go yeah. get andy dalton as a backup quarterback now we got four gingers on the team like this it would be <laughs> wild ain't nobody got souls on this team bro ain't nobody got no souls on this team dude they, they, they day walkers they day walkers but look look if it's true that we have 36 million in money to spend guys i'm all for it, it as much as it breaks again remember keaton allen had one more year left on his contract his value was plummeting dramatically and again he's 31 it is what it is and let, let me just say something about QJ. I'm gonna I'm gonna take Puna off the, the the screen. Let me say something about QJ. He was open all the time for go routes, all Big the time. time. Big time. I, like all the time. Like literally, I'm not even joking. He ran a go route, he was open. And so you can make the argument all day that's what he's good at. Now, why did we not throw the ball to him? Okay, they ran light boxes. Usually there was a safety help up top. Yeah. So my point is if we could get a semblance of a run game. That guy will be our vertical threat easily, but I want like a Malik Neighbors. You're on two go routes out of a uh, out of a two tight end set. Everyone thinking, oh, they're going to run the ball. They're going to run the ball. You know, third and short, dude. That go route will be absolutely open off a of play action. And so, I guess that's my point, right? Like, don't think that QJ has to be one thing. He is very good at creating that deep ball threat. He just needs to high point the ball a little more. <laughs> Right. Yeah, so yeah. There, there were some things he needs to focus on for sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's funny that somebody talked about Max Dugan being a, a ginger. I forgot he's a ginger. We already have a ginger oh, quarterback. So man, we, we got, got all kinds of, of them on the team here. now. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, we got all these gingers up in here. Yeah. Uh, but, but this guy right here is our defensive tackle we signed. We were going to do a video on that, but we just figured, hey, let's just do it today. I mean, he all button guy, dude. He, he's a, he, 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 Eats up a lot of space. I think he I think of him like Gerard Clark. Gerard Clark could be another guy who could step up too. Or Christopher Hinton, another Michigan guy. He's only been in the league one year. Jim Harbaugh obviously knows him. Jesse Minter obviously knows him. So could be interesting to see if uh, Christopher Hinton off the practice squad starts taking some some reps also. You know, I mean, I, I, I love seeing these guys as a butt and gut kind of guy. I mean, as you can see on the photo here, he's a hungry dude. Um, if he's going to go out with some dinners with uh, uh, Mac in the defensive team, he's going to be eating. He gonna be eating good, and uh, you know it, it's 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 good to be able to see these guys. I mean, once again, I mean, you know, Ford has been one of those guys that actually had a pretty solid seasons with Seahawks too. Yep. Um, I mean, I was looking at his PFF and total, you know, ratings and everything. He was pretty solid with the Seahawks. Didn't have the greatest of year last year with the Bills. I don't know. Got seemed like kind of buried a little bit on the depth chart and everything, but. Hey, it's about filling of these gaps, more or less, guys. And I, filling, filling, basically, what this defense is going to be big about is filling space for the linebackers to allow them to be able to go ahead and and get a sack, create pressures. Yep, that's all it really is. Like that's what these kind of sightings are at this point. If we go out and say you draft the guy Sweat from Texas, that guy's just going to be a space eater. He's going to be a guy that you're going to have to say, hey, look, <laughs> you got to probably put two on him. But now, if we have Bosa, Mac, and Thule to deal with, that's going to be a major, major problem. So I'm excited to see kind of where this goes uh, with Puna. Um, I think he could be a great, great addition to this team. But we're doing a great job of filling a lot of holes on this team very quickly with actually cheaper signings, to be honest. Well, and that's the whole point, right? And you want to keep money available to go out and get – look, I, I realize it's painful, but – Yes. Bottom line, guys, at the end of the day, it needed to happen. If we have 30, 36 million dollars available, guys, that's huge. We could go out and get a lot of players. And just so you know, I was looking at some stats on die. I won't show it, but he's a very good tackler. He's a special teams guy, as I said. Uh, but he but he's gonna be good. Uh, I don't think Poyer got picked up yet, at least from what I remember. Um, and I also don't think JK Dobbins has been picked up yet. Someone talked about that earlier. Poyer, so Poyer did get picked up. He, he got did. picked okay. up. I believe it was with I want to say the Dolphins for some reason. Uh, yep, he signed with the Dolphins. Okay, uh, J.K. Dobbins, I don't think his – I think J.K. Dobbins might still be out there as well too. Now, but here's my thing. 
I think we go get a running back this draft as well, too. I do think we should go get a draft again. And I've also said, I think we should re-sign Josh Kelly. Josh Kelly is a gap and go guy. He does have that speed, but I do think he could be a good, you know, depth picks for us as well, too. But again, um, I'll say this. Um, Bosa, look, for a while there, I was thinking he didn't want to be a team player. Uh, yeah. But clearly he is. And, and it kind of frustrates me that this is what happened with uh, Allen. But I think Allen already knows he's only got one or two years left in the tank and he's going to be done. So, you know, we'll you see. Know, and the one thing that, and I, I was speculating, let me give you a little bit of a conspiracy theorist idea or a theory, I'm just going to say. Now, going back to the end of 2022, you know, we obviously had that crushing loss to the Jaguars. <laughs> there was talks a lot about uh, Jim Harbaugh wanting to be able to come to yeah, Raisin Brand. Um, so there was a lot of talks about Jim Harbaugh wanting to coach the Chargers. But I think he kind of was like, hey, look, like I want to be able to give it one more year with Michigan, try to win a natty, yep. basically. So there was a lot of talks about that. And there was rumors that the Spanoses were chatting with him kind of thing at that point. So they obviously didn't make the move at that point. A lot of people said that you should have made that point. Now, as the season progressed with Brandon Staley, you know, he got got let go. Obviously, we we basically had an interim head coach at that point. You know, you, you benched Allen, you benched Bosa, you benched like all these like bigger guys, basically. I think Mac was the only guy still kind of really out there, more or less. Obviously, Williams was out for the season. I kind of speculated and thought, well, we got an interim head coach. We're probably going to go with a new head coach at this point. And if it was going to be Jim Harbaugh, what if they were chatting with Jim Harbaugh? Hey, what would you do right now with some of these players? What moves do you want to make if you're the head coach at this point? And there was rumors that they were chatting at that point. So what if they were saying, hey, just keep both on the sidelines. Keep Allen on the sidelines. Let's make sure he's healthy going into the season. And we'll figure out what we want to do with those yeah. guys. This is my plan that I would like to do with them. And so, yeah, I think there's a great chance that he was already calling the shots before he was even the shot caller at that point. Yep. And maybe I'm weird for saying that, but it's kind of lining up even further that, like, you got to buy into the system. And I think that he already kind of was putting in his ideas of what he wanted to do with his team. And so I, it's cool to see. I mean, once again, that's completely a theory on my side, but. So kind of lined uh, up exactly. I'm going to I'm going to add to you on that, James. Uh, that happened, yep. and and I, yeah, I'm going to tell you exactly why I know that happened. Is did you if you watch the Kirk Cousins? Um, did you watch his like? I watched a bit of it, uh, but but Florio did this whole thing on it because he's a Vikings fan. Kirk Cousins came out. Okay, you guys realize there are times you can talk to players and times you cannot talk to players. Yep, they were talking to Kirk Cousins for weeks before it happened <laughs> yeah. he came out and basically said oh yeah you know i was talking to such and such i was talking to this and that and he's dude well before it was even announced right so and he he's referring like three weeks ago and all this other stuff yeah. so so my, my point my my point is that that definitely happened they'd already had conversations I think it was already in place. They're probably going to fire Staley no matter what happened at the end of the season. Well, unless he made it to the Super Bowl or something like that. Now. Yeah. But but my point is, they, they'd already had conversations. You're probably right, James. I'm sure he yeah. said, hey, look, dude, just pull him off to the side. What's the point? You know, let's let's not, you know, do anything. You know, let's keep these guys healthy. I want them there. And we all know Allen was going to be available at the end of the season. But they're like, why, why put him back out there? You know, yeah. what if he gets hurt again? He'll have less trade value if they were to trade him. So exactly. Yep. That's exactly it. And and uh, we did also get a super chat in there actually right now, too. So oh. we got easy shot. A hey, What's shout up? out. What's Thank up? you, man. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. So likely scenario, we take best wide receiver at five, trade back with the Vikings, get JJ Ooh. and O line, or the Raiders trade up and we get DA. Wow, Devontae Adams and Ooh. our O line. Holy I mean, smokes. I, oh, so so I'll, I'll jump a little bit on this in a couple different ways. So <laughs> okay. Um, hey, by the way, thank you so much. I appreciate that. Yeah, thank you, Easy Shot. I really appreciate it. Um, so with yes, take it, take a wide receiver of five. You have to find that elite guy at this point. Now, I do think Quentin Johnson can be a very, very elite guy all around. 
Um, but same side, we'll see where that kind of pans out this season. I mean, I did allude to some signings that we could do for a free agency and everything too. Now with earlier there this morning, when the Vikings ended up trading with the Texans to get another first round pick, first thought I was thinking was, man, what if they jump to five and they give us two first round picks? Oh, that'd be I so mean, sick. we would have yep. a, a set of players. Personally, then at that point, we would probably go right tackle at 11. We'd probably get Fuanga, I think, would be the guy from well, Oregon guy's State. Nasty. He's got a he's got a Polynesian mullet, dude. Yeah, that's it. that's all you need to know. The Poly yep. mullet. Poly that guy, that, mullet. That's legit. Have you ever played volleyball with a guy, a Polynesian with a mullet? Oh, you're gonna get destroyed, <laughs> dude. You're gonna get destroyed. <laughs> they don't mess around, bro. They don't mess around. <laughs> they do not mess around. So <laughs> that's probably where I would think that they would go at that point, because um, that guy's a beast and a nasty, nasty right tackle fits exactly to what Jim Harbaugh would like to go with. And then the later first round pick, I assume that they're going to say here, here's two first round picks this year. And we'll kind of do some back end trading with some picks at that point. That back end pick will probably be a wide receiver at that point. And we'll probably go get a Leggett, which I think I've seen him in the back end of the first uh, early second kind of round. And we don't want the chiefs to get him either because he's, I I, I actually, exactly. no, no, literally, I'm not even joking. I was like, Holy smokes, dude. If if the Chiefs get him, I would be so ticked because because he's freaking good. He's yep. amazing. Uh, Absolutely, Absolutely. hands issue a little bit, but he's great. NFL Mike. By the way, I should have we should have reached out to you. We would have loved to have you come on today. I completely forgot to ask Kyle to uh, get a hold of you, but we need you to come on. He's and thank a brother you for the from another mother, man. <laughs> NFL brother Mike's awesome. another mother. Yep. So NFL Mike, shout out, man. Thanks, man, for the four ninety nine dollars uh, super chat. So hot take, a Tyler Boyd or DPG, DPJ, or DPJ, who's a, who's DPJ, DPJ, or KJ Osborne signing, trade back for tackle, cornerback, or tight end, and target both Rome, Wilson, Blake Corum with those extra picks. Look, I and the whole thing, man, you're going to find a way to be able to bring in more Michigan guys. and. It's about finding those guys, those Michigan guys on the offensive side now, too. So a uh, Blake Corum makes sense. A guy that understands the system, understands what Jim Harbaugh wants. It's going to happen. I do think that Rome Wilson is a stud, too. Like, dude, he's good. I didn't watch a lot of college yeah. football. Yeah. But when I watched him in the playoffs, I'm like, that guy knows what to do and make clutch catches at the right time. And I'm a big fan of that. I think it would be phenomenal to be able to do that. I, I'm going to be a little bit on the whole thing about getting that Hunter Renfro signing. You Dude, probably get that get Renfro. First. I'm I'm riding that with that one for a bit, guys. I'm riding with that one. He'd be cheap. He would be he cheap. Would he be had cheap. a horrible season last year. He, he yeah. had, they, they didn't throw him the ball. Freaking uh, Rodney Farber didn't throw him the ball at all. So <laughs> Rodney Farber. He's skinny Rodney Farber. Leader of Cola. NFL Mike, we need, we need to hit you up, buddy. <laughs> Uh, right. yeah, we, we need to hit you. Oh, yeah, Peoples NFL Jones, guys. yeah, Donovan Peoples Jones. That's that's who he said. And Donovan he, Peoples Jones, once again, an ex Michigan guy, you yep. know it. And going even to another signing, too, Mason Cole was a center from the Steelers who was a Michigan guy, too. He's a free agent right now. I wouldn't be surprised if we go after him, too. And we have to build that O line further. Yeah, I think uh, I think taking a wide receiver at five makes sense. But, you know, you never know, yeah. guys. And, again, the cool thing about this is it's speculation at this point. 100%. But it's good to see that we're getting some depth out there, right? Yep. And and I'll say this. Um, and, by the way, uh, let's see. You guys, you guys are making some great comments. You know, Bowers, I think, is still a possibility. But, guys, we just picked up two tight ends. So I'm, I would say the possibility of Bowers, I think if we trade back and he's available wherever we go to, then maybe they go with him. Um, but again, Stone Smart and Parham are really more offensive weapons than uh, defensive weapons, for sure. Um, uh, yeah, I mean the center, dude. There's a, there's a lot of things that we could do. And by by the way, Nick, so let, let's talk about Telesco for just a second. Not to beat a dead horse, just so you know, I you know I don't have it in front of me. I was trying to pull it up. I thought I had, but couldn't find it. But statistically speaking, his draft selection was abysmal folks he was like in 11 years it was like he was ranked 29th or 30th yeah. in the in, as far as gms are concerned <laughs> we never yeah. re-signed players they let him walk it was awful and he always said talk about building the draft and i'm like dude come on like what is going on yep. so i mean 
it was locked on chargers shout out locked on chargers by the way um they did a whole breakdown of talking about what was one of the best drafts the chargers ever had and they went back to 2004 yep. like they passed up like a long era pretty much yep. of not having very solid drafts all around i did a video about talking about the ravens and their draft in the same timeline of Tom Telesco. Yeah. Guys, they're getting pro bowlers in the sixth and seventh round. They're getting guys that are performing at high levels late in the rounds. We had, I think, three pro bowlers in 11 years of drafts with Tom Telesco's after the first round. Yep. Three. You can't yep. do that, guys. It, you yeah. need to get hit those picks later on. And, well, and even look at even look at QJ. QJ was kind of a crappy pick to some degree, oh, right? Quite a, quite a reach, in my opinion. Yeah, like kind of wild. But so you know, cool. and Flowers was better, but he was smaller. He was a smaller body. Now QJ yep. is probably going to stay healthy, but I think they assumed, hey, we we can we could get him, you get his hands going the right way. And NFL Mike, you're right. You know, um, anti <laughs> dude, Raiders are going <laughs> to struggle. I'm, I'm really curious, but but think about this, guys. Again, th this is this is what. Ortiz had to deal with. We got we got Mac back, we got Bosa back, and we got Thule. Guys, yep. our our defensive line will be stout if if Mac and Bosa can stay healthy. With Thule, we'll be in fine shape. Um, in the, in the yeah, another one, thing yep, of JT Woods in the third round, not good. Yeah. <laughs> well, okay, uh, McKitty in the fourth round, which we could have in in that same round, we had two fourth picks, which we got Josh Palmer and uh, you know Trey McKitty. In that same round, you could have had uh, Amon Ra say Brown. Yeah, and that guy's been a dog. That guy's one of my favorite wide receivers in the league right now. So like, good. So good. I mean, that guy's an absolute dog, and he would fit to a T exactly what Jim Harbaugh would want. Just a tough, rugged dude that's just going out there and blocking people. I mean, that's where I expect a lot of these picks with Joe Walt era and Jim Harbaugh era, we're going to find guys that are just great system fits. And we're going to get a lot of guys late in the pit in the draft that are going to do extremely well. I want to say, do we have 10 picks now in the draft? Am I, am I um, wrong on that? Uh, well, no, I think we have actually, let's, let's it's check. Nine, I, I, I think? I can, let's let, let me check here. So here you go. I got it here. So we got a fifth, our fifth pick, first round. So one, two, yeah, I think three, four, five, six, yeah. seven, eight, nine. Yeah, we have so nine. My goal was to get to ten, and yep. I hope we could get to ten because we trade back. Even guys. if we trade back one of those, yeah, great. I mean, if we could just get more guys that could be like, let's say we just get eight dudes that could be just great system fits for us. That's huge for us, guys. That yep. would be massive for us. Eight out of, say, those nine picks work out really, really well. System fits. Let's go. Let's go. I mean, I love the era that we're going into. Once again, people even talked about it in the chat and, and in our comments on our videos. Sometimes you got to rip the Band-Aid, and the Band-Aid has been ripped. And yep. It was now or later, basically. So Think of it this way, too, guys. Um I think I think a running back makes a lot of sense. You know, the Ravens in the past would always draft like two running backs, and they they let running backs go a lot because they know if you build the offensive line, it's going to be offensive line and running backs. That's probably what's going to happen. Now, I don't know what we signed. Someone talked about Morse uh, from the Bills, the sensor. He could be yep. a guy we go after, but I, we need corners. We need cornerbacks. Cornerbacks are pretty bad. But look at this guy. This is Gus Edwards. He's going to get touches. He's going to get probably 20 touches a game. You know, um, running backs are going to get touches. It's going to be it's going to be split 50-50. So yep. Yep. might even be more. And than I want to say uh, Mitch Morris actually signed with the Jags already. So he's already gone. Oh, he did? Oh, OK. Yeah, he's well, gone. And it was actually kind of a pretty manageable contract, too. But yeah, with with Gus Edwards, I'm still we are going to go running back somewhere or another. Audrey Estime from Notre Dame. That guy's draft stock kind of went kind of south on him but a guy that could be a very bruiser style type back, a guy that would like to be able to hit people. Um, that's kind of what I feel like this offense wants. And you could get him in the sixth round, or at least or where I've seen him yeah. drop to the sixth round. Um, that's where we're going to draft another running back. We're going to have probably three very solid running backs on this team. Yep. And I'm excited to be able to see that happen because gosh, how many times, how many times did we see first down runs being one yard, zero, 
you know, yard type gain type things. I mean, okay. guys, we we got to get a run game. Oh, so Miguel's over here referring <laughs> to an older video. We should trade all our picks to get more. <laughs> That's right. Was trade that all of our picks mock to this year and get more picks back, in 2025. Trading back, trading back, trading back. Yeah. Oh, my yeah, gosh, man. that's amazing. Um, yeah, so, Rob, I want to talk about this real quick. And, by the way, Rob, um, yeah, James, is you need to connect with James out here in Arizona for sure. Um, yeah. Uh, so, and I think, it. yeah, the, he's going to make a thing. huge difference. Because, bottom line, remember, Joey Bosa used to always go to Florida with his brother and do the whole stupid thing with his brother down in Florida. They were just goofing off on the beach, clearly not getting ready for – for football season, I think I think Ben Herbert's going to ride him like sea biscuit, and just be all over him like white on rice, and just not let him go anywhere, dude, yep. and and just put his ass in shape. Yeah, hundred percent, man. And I definitely feel that that's going to be a big, big change to this team. Once again, guys, a lot of these moves that are happening right now are culture changes, culture shifts, getting away from the norm, getting away from the charging element of things. Some people even yep. already talked about Chargers are charging their off season right now. Kind of thing. Well, I mean, we I'd much rather charging the off season per se, and it actually works out in the season where we do not charger the season. This is just the season we're trying to build this team to be a whole new culture. Yeah. And I do think that with a lot of these moves right now, tough to see, tough to swallow, but it once again it's moves to be able to create a better culture for this team and a team that Joe Ortiz and Jim Harbaugh want, and it's it's exciting to watch this, guys. I'm I'm very very excited to be able to see this. Right well, now. and 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 again, there's going to be more moves as well too, as we all know. Yep. Uh, again, let, let, let me show you. Let me show you one thing that I I, I want to bring up, and I just want to kind of do my little. Uh, I want to do a monologue. And by the way, uh, NFL Mike, will Joey step up? I think so. I think I think that yep. Ben Herbert will help him out. He'll probably come in in passing situations. He'll probably be out for most plays. But when when it's a passing situation, you have Tuli Mack and Bosa out there. Makes sense. Dude, once again, these guys are restructured. So yep. I guess the four top guys restructured. Mac, I was saying Mac wouldn't want to go somewhere else and be somewhere else. He's later in his career. Solid piece. We get to keep him. Bosa, I was feeling like he wanted to get cut to be able to go to the Niners. But guess what? He signed on for this team. Yep. Now, this is the Jim Harbaugh effect. You know, sometimes the Jim Harbaugh effect is bad. Sometimes it's great. And you know what? We got to take the good with the bad right now. I I'll say this. We stack up that linebacking core a little bit, add a cup, add a cornerback to this team, and maybe a little bit more piece to the D-line. This team is going to be dangerous for the yep. defense. For Justin Herbert, exactly what is on the screen right now. This is massive for this guy. Yep. You, we, we keep the defense or we'll keep the opposition score under 28 points. We're going to be a winning organization. And that's what it's all about, guys. I'm tired of these heart attack games. I'm tired of that. How many times are we watching stupid games? You're getting cardio five minutes left in the fourth quarter for the next 30 minutes, dude. Like, it's frustrating. I want I want us to be able to say at five minutes, this game is over with. We got yep. this. Like, I want that. Let's change this narrative, guys, about the Chargers. And that's what they're doing right now. So, so guys, so let me get to my monologue for showing this video or this, this stat here. Justin Herbert has been the person we win or lose with Justin Herbert. That's it. Right. It, it wasn't a conversation around, Oh, we could run the ball or do anything else. The defense was 30th in the league. Running game was 30th in the league. So guess what? Herbert had to outscore every single player or every single team we played against. Now we lose Mac or William or sorry, we lose Williams and Bosa or Allen. Golly, Williams and Allen. We need we need to re retool that. That's probably going to be uh, someone like a Malik Neighbors or you know Marvin Harrison. He's available, but it's not all on his shoulders now, guys. You can now have a running game that he doesn't have to throw the ball to win the game for you. Uh, now, can he do it? Yes, he can do it. But does he have to do it? The, the answer is no. Look at teams like the Ravens, really, and look at like the Niners. Brock Purdy is a subpar quarterback. He's yeah. accurate. He gets the ball out. That's what he does. Justin Herbert is a much better quarterback. He's very accurate, and he gets the ball out with extreme accuracy and extreme velocity. Um, but there's a lot of things. Again, it's not all on his shoulders now. You can say, all right, 
you now have a team around you to be successful. And that's one of the things that a lot of people did not listen to uh, Jim Harbaugh in his press conference. He said, I don't want him to be the guy having to do it all. So, yeah, no more strip clubs. <laughs> He's Christian, Nick. Come on. He doesn't do that. <laughs> so, but, but, but this, I wanted to just highlight this fact and, and, uh, you know, we, we should probably talk more about some depth, maybe tomorrow when we go live. And by the way, we're all going to be together. All the boat pros are going to be together. We're going to be in Arizona. So, uh, we'll have to pick a venue to do that, Kyle or, or James with Kyle once he gets here. Yep. Yes, sir. That'll be great. I'm looking forward to it. Okay. So there's a lot we could discuss on who's going to, we're going to sign and all the above, but I'll tell you, man, guys, it's, it's, it's exciting to see where we're going as an organization, as much as Keenan and Mike hurt and they hurt. Let's just make that very clear. They hurt. Um, you know, I think you could easily resign Alex Erickson. I know he's not the end all be all situation, but obviously Jalen Guyton's available. He's cheap. Alex Erickson would be cheap. Um, but I do think, you know, if we stick and pick, you know, a good wide receiver at five makes a lot of sense to me. So, or yeah. a quarterback. I mean, you know, we we need we need a lockdown corner. I mean, and Arnold yeah. is ridiculous. Yep. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. I mean, do you put a put a five pick on a cornerback or whatnot? I, I don't know. I mean, there's times that it's happened. Uh, I mean, Sauce Gardner a, was a high-level pick, and he's a stud. Um, so if you think that you could put a guy on an island, essentially, and a quarter of your defense basically being completely locked down, that's a big win for you as a, as a defense. So yep. um, So I, I definitely think <laughs> – and Lolo, that's, that's one thing I thought a lot about, too, is that if we're going to probably – find a way to sign some X Raven wide receiver of some sort. <laughs> I mean, it, the thing is though, we're going to see a lot of those type of core like connections, you know, Michigan and Ravens. You're going to see a lot of those connections all throughout. And we've already done it at, with a tight end, by the way, um, with Hayden Hurst. So. Well, yeah, ag again, and you, and you could re-sign Mike, uh, Mike Williams again, folks. Yep. I yeah. think we have, if sport track is accurate, we have $36 million to spend now. And, OBJ, I think he's getting a little old, but he's still he's still OBJ. He's still very good. Um, so look, Nick you said this: the regime is a breath of Oregon mountain air. I like that. Ah, um, I mean, relaxing. you know, and there's a lot to be said about this, guys. I mean, so we got a lot more we're going to discuss too. And again, Bosa is definitely damaged goods for sure. But dude, guys, like, so I'm gonna, I'm going to tell you a funny story. I, I can't say who I heard this from, but. My buddy played golf with an, a football player that's currently playing in the league. He plays for Denver. Uh, I'm not going to say who it is, uh, but he basically said that Nick Bosa, the, the, the football player, said Nick Bosa is a total douchebag. <laughs> Everyone hates him, <laughs> but he's really good. Yeah. But they say that uh, Joey Bosa is a really cool guy and everyone likes playing against him, but he's absolutely incredible. He actually, a lot of offensive linemen actually say that Joey Bosa is still better than Nick Bosa. The difference is Nick Bosa is a little younger. And so that was ultimately what was said. So again, if Joey Bosa could stay healthy, look at what he did with Thule Mack and Bosa on the field. He got like three sacks in just a couple of games. Yep. So look, we'll be fine. It's just, can he stay healthy? That's the big concern. If they can all stay healthy for the entire season. Oh my gosh. Think about that. Wow. Odell yeah. Beckham's coming. We could probably sign him cheap. Justin Jefferson. Yeah. Oh. Woo. yeah, I mean, you know, big, big contract guys like that with Justin Jefferson. That would be ridiculous to be able to see that happen. I mean, I don't yeah. see that happening by any means. But, yep. hey, guys, we've had some shockers already, right? I mean, who knows what's going to happen here? Well, and again, if, if it's true that we got $36 million, we got plenty of, plenty of bucks to spend. So yeah. maybe what we should do, guys. Okay, so so the video, we're going to go live together tomorrow. What would you like to see us do? Talk about free agents that we should go after before the draft? Because I was thinking about doing maybe a right tackle we could go after, maybe a center we could go after, maybe a cornerback we could go after, um, maybe a wide receiver we could go after. Um, yep. Maybe we could talk about that. If we got that much money available – uh, there could be a lot we could do with that with that cash. So yeah. maybe we should talk about that a little bit more tomorrow um, uh, on our live. And look, guys, this is a new regime. We're going to run the ball. We're going to smash it right up the middle and demoralize the team and play good defense. You know, um, yeah. 
so I think there's a lot to be said. You know, and Brian, I, you know, Central would be very good. Someone with depth, someone that can play a number of different positions is going to be good. Yep. So, yep. We got a lot of things that are going to be moving along from, wow, we're almost getting close. Well, it's about a month and a half since the draft or till the draft. So, a lot of moves still going to be being, being made, guys. I guarantee that. Yep. I agree. And, and, and I'll say this. Um, if I would, I rather have Jay Jettas or Marvin Harrison, probably Marvin Harrison, just cause he's a rookie. Um, and I know, and you can say, well, he's, he's, you know, unproven, but he's a freak of nature and Jetta wants to get paid yeah. fat money, dude. Like we're talking fat contracts. So yeah. Yeah. It's a, it's more about trying to have cheaper contracts at this point. I mean, just Jefferson's a dog. Like he's an absolute Amazing. dog. Amazing. As a wide receiver. I mean, it would be pretty fun to watch Justin Jefferson playing with Justin Herbert. So oh, be crazy. that would be yep. phenomenal to watch. Now, once again, guys, I'm going to throw this out there a little bit too. So when, when the uh, Vikings traded for that first round pick, I was watching a stream. I, I that's good sports. I think is what it was. Um, there was a lot of people chiming in there. They're like, Oh, the, the Vikings are going to trade for Justin Herbert. Now, Justin Herbert. Da, 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 da. I mean, <laughs> Yeah, I mean, we've had some shocking moves, right, already. Yeah. I mean, I don't think that's going to happen. No way. But at the same side, you got, you know, Jim Harbaugh right now kind of making some crazy moves that are kind of lighting up the fu- fan base, basically. Yep. Um, and he talked heavy about J.J. McCarthy. Now, J.J. McCarthy to Justin Herbert, woo, that's, <laughs> that's going to be a tough one to swallow there, guys. That's going to be a tough one to swallow there. But there's some weird rumors that people are talking about that I – I cannot see that happening. I cannot see that happening. But yeah, I mean, what, you you think about the fan base at that point, the the trust level of a, a new regime coming in doing stuff like yep. that would be, woo, it'd be hard. It'd be real hard at that point. Yeah, well, and and you got to remember, he came here because of Justin. He had yep. a major hard on for Justin Herbert, right? And you know, and you know, he, he told he told stories about how he would say, "Hey, son." Look at how this guy plays quarterback, right? Yep. Bottom line, look, let's go back to this picture right here. Okay. It ain't Herbert's fault. It is Never. not Herbert's fault, right? It, it is it is 100% the team around Herbert that struggled. And we've said this over and over again. You have to remember, they are building a team around Herbert and spreading the wealth on the offensive and defensive side of the ball. I think you're going to probably see some more defensive players signed. We might even get a depth you know, veteran cornerback piece, someone cheap, who knows? Uh, but yeah, it's going to be, going to be interesting. Dude, that Brett McCall comment that just was up there. If they love alt could be a move for a current left tackle, Rashawn Slater for another first this year resets the five-year clock. Yep. Whoa. I mean, I, I mean, you got to think uh, Rashawn Slater's a guy that literally says, don't, give me any help at all. I put me on an Island. I'm going to take care of my side. Like he's a guy that's an absolute lockdown (laughs) guy. Now you're going to have to pay left tackle a ton of money, right? Like that's just one of the second highest payroll, you know, line items is a a left tackle. But if you go with a Joe Alt and then you trade off Slater to some other team that needs a left tackle, say you get another first round pick or whatnot, plus another pick somewhere else. Whoa. Don't trade him off. You just release him. You just release him. You release Slater. I mean, there's no reason. I mean, you'll to you'll do get that. a comp pick, though. That's what I'm saying. You'll get a comp pick for that. Oh, after his rookie contract, but releasing yeah. him, you won't get anything. Well, um, sure, right? Yeah, after his rookie contract. That's, that's but it, if you say you get a first round pick and the best you'll get on a comp pick third, you know, yep. you might as well take the first right now if that's your idea. But sure, I mean, that's incredible oh. thought, more or less. It, that's the other guy too that you were talking. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Lot, lot two, lot two. Yeah, um, and I can't remember. There's another linebacker that's out there. I don't know if he's still available. Uh, we'll, we'll have to do some more research on all that. And again, a lot, lot of this stuff can change. Who's the guy from Carolina? That's that's actually the the highest ranked uh, linebacker, um, Luvu or something like that is his last name. Yeah. He already he yeah. he got signed already too. Oh, uh, he did. Okay, it was, it was the Eagles? I think. Oh God, the Eagles are getting everybody, guys. Eagles yeah. are getting everybody. Yeah, Frankie, so, Frankie again, Lugo, right? Yeah, and by the way, there are a lot of stupid rumors flying oh, around. Commanders, it, you got signed by the oh, commanders. commanders. Got it. Okay. Yeah, that that was the one. I, I was actually going to look at that. I was thinking through that again. Um, yep. 
Okay, so he is gone. All right, well, look, bottom line, folks, a lot's going to be changing. A lot's going to be happening. We'll do some more research for tomorrow. We'll do our live video. we got to decide what we're going to do with James um, tomorrow. Yep. Um, but, guys, we just want to hop in and, you know, let's let's talk about this guy one last, last time. Final thoughts on uh, our boy, Keenan Allen. Keenan Allen, man. Well, yeah. Jeez, I mean, the whole thing about Keenan Allen, I mean, gosh. Number 13, you know, it's number one 13. of those numbers that you kind of think is an unlucky number, but we definitely struck uh, gold with this guy. Um, the guy was absolutely a charger through and through, man. Um, I can only imagine what he's thinking now. You know, do I want to go out to Chicago? I mean, the trade is <laughs> official, right? <laughs> cold as hell. Yeah, it's official. It's yeah. cold as hell out there. Oof. Different different Not world hard. out there, man. And, uh, you know, it's it's a crazy, crazy thing to say that we, we've moved on from Keenan Allen, but that's what this new regime is going to do. They're going to make changes all the time. And yes, forever a charger. Um, he will come back and probably be a Hall of Famer as, and retire as a charger. He will for sure be in the ring of um, uh, Chargers Ring of Honor, basically. He will be in there uh, as a charger. The guy is an absolute stud. Incredible. Um, sucks yep. to be able to see him move on, but... You know, once again, it's the ripping the Band-Aid at this point or we're going to do it next year either which way. So it just seemed like this is what it, it's going to be. And sucks to see, but that's what's going to be at this point. So um, bummer, bummer. Um, it, well, it, it honestly took us a while. I mean, I was still driving back from Vegas yesterday, but I remember Kyle even saying, he's like, I don't know if I'm mentally ready to have like a sulking video to talk about Keenan Allen being gone. <laughs> And yeah. uh, it's going to be a different looking team all around for us. So, uh, but thank you, Keenan Allen, for everything you did with the Chargers. Yeah. And again, you know, uh, it's tough. It's it's hard, you know, but, but again, folks, look, this team is changing. It's going to be a different yeah. offense. You're not going to see Justin Herbert have to do it all. Um, you're going to see a power run game. The tight ends are going to be utilized a little differently now. Um, and, uh, you know, We'll go from there. And by the way, Kyle's not on because he's driving out to uh, Arizona right now as we speak. So he's probably listening in. Um, but yeah, that's that's exactly what's going to happen. And again, um, yeah, and they're excited to get Keenan. But dude, guys, it'd be very interesting to see even what the Bears do with pick one. I mean, they might not. Maybe they trade away the pick, you know. Yeah. Um, a lot to be said about that. But we'll talk more tomorrow, guys. We'll go live once uh, Kyle's here. We'll have to pick a location. Might be here. Might be my place. Or we might be in the hotel too, James. Who knows? I guess we could do yeah. it in the hotel. So, sure. alrighty, guys. Well, we're the Bolt Bros. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bolt Bros, let's go.